The news, good evening. The Electoral Commission, uh, Seychelles, has confirmed that the presidential and assembly elections will be held together. This follows the declaration made by President Danny Ford last night. The Electoral Commission has said in a press release that it will provide further details after the formal dissolution of the Assembly next week. In line with this new development, the Electoral Commission is calling upon Seychellois citizens who qualify to vote to register as soon as possible. This is because the register of voters will close as soon as the election dates are announced in the official gazette. The leader of One Seychelles, uh, Alice Tange, has welcomed President Faure's announcement that the National Assembly election will be held in conjunction with the presidential election later this year. Mr. Saint-Ange said that he wants the district council election to be held together. This, he says, will minimize expenses in view of the economic situation caused by COVID-19. Mr. Saint-Ange, who will stand as his party's presidential candidate, added that the party is ready for the National Assembly election and it will have candidates for all districts. The LDS is ready to contest presidential and National Assembly elections to give the people of Seychelles a clear choice of leadership. This is the declaration made by the LDS president, Mr. Roger Mancien. LDS says they are ready to lead Seychelles into a new era of good government for the better future of our country. However, LDS considers that the decision of President Ford to dissolve the National Assembly is ill-advised and puts uh, politics above the country. Mr. Mossien said that at a time when we are facing the crisis caused by COVID-19, it is a significant risk for the Assembly not to be functioning because there may be a need for urgent legislation and the dissolution diminishes the capacity of our government to respond to a possible urgency. The decision is clearly in contradiction with the President's declaration of his desire for national unity, Mr. Mossien says. The National Assembly will still convene next week, Speaker Nicolas Prea says. Members will decide if they will maintain what is already on the order paper or whether they will take other business. This follows uh, President uh, Faure's announcement last night that uh, the election for the National Assembly will be held together with the presidential election. Article 110 of the Seychelles Constitution allows the President to dissolve the National Assembly for such reasons as the na national interest. After seven days, a proclamation of the dissolution of the National Assembly will be published in the official gazette and the next day the National Assembly will uh, dissolve. Speaker Prea says that there are certain important businesses that are still work they are still working on and that they would like to complete before the Sixth Assembly's dissolution. There are priorities at the moment. We've got three very important bills uh, in front of us. Uh, we've received the, the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution. It's a series of amendments, I think about 28 amendments. We've got also the uh, Political Parties Amendment. We've got the Elections Act Amendment. And um, these are very, very important bills. So the, the Assembly Business Committee is meeting this afternoon. If there's consensus between the two parties, then we will probably change the business on the other paper and give priority to the three bills. We would like also, I mean, this is one of my desire, and it's also the desire of Honorable Bernard George as chair of the bills committee, to finish with the civil code. We've invested so much energy and so much work in the civil code. It will be a shame not to finish it. We've got a few uh, um, other amendments to take in, and then we'll do the, the third reading. That will be over. If not, if it's carried over to the, uh, to the seventh co cohort, then um, we might see that there will be a need to start all over again. And we don't want to waste that. We, we've invested so much resources in, in, that, uh, 
in that work. So I'm trying also to get the civil code on the other paper. So maybe after an hour, taking in a few more amendments and, and so on, we can actually do um, the third reading and dispose of. The Seychelles Civil Aviation Authority, the SCA, says that they are ready for the arrival of commercial passenger flights tomorrow, the 1st of August. Emirates Airline will be arriving tomorrow morning around 6.40 with 160 passengers on board. The SCA has installed all necessary facilities to help minimize the spread of COVID-19. SCA's Chief Executive Officer, Gary Albert, says that at the moment they are working on a more effective system to do contact tracing. For now, we have to do everything manually. For example, at head office, when you come, you have to write your name manually. And we are looking at how we can make use of technology to reduce um, the contact. For example, our staff, for example, we have a pass. And uh, how can we, by using only that pass, be able to get it, get it in the system that we are in the building or we have exited the building rather than entering manually. And, but most officers, Sky Chef, um, SHS, SCA, they've put in place the, the system for contact tracing. But we are looking further ahead. How can, you, how can we make this more efficient and more effective? The State Bank of Mauritius, the SBM, is closing its business in Seychelles nearly a year after it became operational. The central bank has approved the formal request and the bank is not accepting any new business as from today. The bank currently employs three Seychellois staff. Speaking during a press conference, the governor of the central bank, Carolina Bell, says that the closure will have minimal impact on the banking sector. The communication that we've received uh, from SBM is that um, they have been assessing their various businesses across the geographies they operate in, as well as the current impact of COVID-19 on all their businesses. And in light of uh, this assessment, uh, they have decided to close the franchise uh, in Seychelles. In the context of this closure, there will be uh, no impact in light that this bank had um, a small operation. Uh, perhaps the only impact is the discomfort to the clients that we have to acknowledge because uh, the bank is closing and they have to move uh, their facilities and deposits to other banks. But apart from that, the rest of uh, the banking sector remains solid. The Truth uh, Commission's uh, chairperson has expressed uh, disappointment with perpetrators of past wrongdoing for failing to come forward as the panel ended its first year of public hearings. Gabriel McIntyre said the inquiry's eventual success depends on people's willingness to admit their mistakes. The Commission's August break coincides with the announcement of the dissolution of the National Assembly ahead of elections. Arriving this morning for the final public hearings of its first year, the Commission's chairperson and her deputy registered both hope and disappointment as they prepared to take a break. Perpetrators have disappointed me, a lot of perpetrators. The fact that people that know things that are responsible or bear some responsibility are not willing to come forward and disclose their role in certain actions. That This is a truth commission. It's about getting the truth and it needs everybody to participate regardless of the role you play. Hearing testimony at Perseverance today on hotel property acquisitions, the panel still faces a huge task ahead considering evidence already heard and testimony still to come. Since its inception, it's registered nearly 500 complaints, of which 25 were deemed inadmissible. It's now juggling more than 140 active cases, heard from over 400 witnesses and suspects, and has sent out more than 1,600 letters. Coming into being last August, with a remit to seek truth and foster reconciliation and national unity, time and again it's unlocked painful memories, even anger. To think that we, the people, that were arrested, tortured, 
terrorise. We'll never forgive them. The Commission always planned to take a break in August and sit in closed session in September to avoid having any public hearings during the pre-election period. Fortuitously, that begins now as the nation's focus shifts from battles of the past to the political battlegrounds of the present. We don't want to be seen as in any way influencing the outcome of that election or people using us as a platform to influence the outcome of that election. The TV cameras may be off for a while and the chamber empty, but public hearings into events of the past will resume in November with the first determinations and continue for two more years. This is uh, the end of uh, this news for this evening. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant evening.